Welcome to my review of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Before the review starts, I just want to let you know that in this video, I discuss Final Fantasy VII, I discuss Crisis Core Reunion, and Remake, and I cover story spoilers for all three. I talk about the endings and, and everything. I really go into it, so I just wanted to let you know if you haven't played those games and you're not comfortable with spoilers for those games, then please wait until you play those games to watch this video. I do not go into any spoilers for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I don't even talk about trailers. The only thing I do is speculate what I think might happen or what I hope happens or expectations, but nothing I discuss in this video is confirmed or confirmed as a spoiler or anything like that. I also want you to know that on this channel, on YouTube and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Rex Sterling, I'm currently playing through Final Fantasy VII Remake Endgame, the original Final Fantasy VII Endgame, and on the day that Rebirth launches, February 29th, I'll be streaming it on this channel and my Twitch channel as well, and I'll be streaming the entire game, so I would love to see you there. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. Take care. I think in order to give a proper review of Final Fantasy VII Remake, I have to talk about my unique experience going into it. I streamed Final Fantasy VII, the OG, and then I streamed Crisis Core. I did blind playthroughs of both. So I went into them for the first time ever just last month. Final Fantasy VII, I think, is one of the best games ever made. And I, I'm not exaggerating. And I think what makes it one of the best games ever made is the story that it tells, the risks that it takes with characters. You look at Aerith's death scene. Insane that they did that. When they, when they did it in, at the end of disc one, crazy. And then... The way they executed it, putting you into a boss fight right after, and you've got that sad music playing, and there's no fanfare when you beat the boss. It's just the most depressing shit ever. And they pulled it off like it was amazing. It was like literally art the way that they did it. And I think the ending was perfect as well at the, at the end of the game when you had that final face off with Sephiroth. And I thought it was about to be another boss fight where I'm in control. And Cloud just hit him. What was it? Omni Slash? Was that the move he used? He just hit him with Omni Slash. One hit. Bro, it was so sick. I have so much respect for the original. And the reason why I'm spending so much time talking about the original Final Fantasy VII is because you have to understand how much context that gives to the remake. Recently, I put a video up on, on YouTube and it was me reacting to the Metacritic and the Open Critic review scores for Rebirth. And I said in that video that I feel like the people behind this game, the developers behind the remake and Rebirth and this trilogy that we're going through, I feel like they are taking one of the biggest gambles in gaming history. And I don't think that's an exaggeration at all. This is one of the most well-executed, most nostalgic, most beautiful, games ever made in the history of gaming it really is for, for for people that can appreciate it it is and to advertise that you're doing a remake and then swerve and you're not doing a remake you're doing something different you're either expanding or you're making a new timeline or even more ballsy you're doing a direct sequel disguised as a remake so going into the remake i was really nervous obviously the first thing that stood out to me about the remake was the graphics seeing midgar and seeing these characters in in this much detail it's a beautiful game so I played it on PS5. I played the, uh, you know, integrated version of it with the, the UV DLC. It ran extremely well and it looked beautiful. As you're playing through the game, seeing all of these iconic moments, iconic boss fights, iconic characters, iconic locations, right? Seeing it all in modern day graphics and presentation, I, it was like, it's weird because I just played Final Fantasy VII last month. So it feels dumb to use the word nostalgia, but it just felt like dopamine hits constantly. Every time I would see a new character, you know, uh, every time I would see a new a new location, it would be like, holy shit. Seeing the plate fall was like, holy shit, you know? In terms of presentation, in terms of like visual presentation, the entire game was just a treat. You know, I'll talk about the battle mechanics real quick. They are trying to do a mix of action combat with turn-based mechanics. So you're doing, you know, you're doing action combat. You're, you're fully controlling characters, able to switch party members on the fly, and you're doing action combat. And you have an ATB bar that's filling up while you're doing that. And then when it fills up, you can do like special moves and magic, use items. 
So you're waiting on the ATB bar like a turn-based game, and then you're doing the action combat in between. I thought it, I thought it was like such a perfect way of integrating action with turn-based. Every character had a different style, a different play style, a different combat style. Every character felt unique. I'm glad they kept the materia system. That was one thing that was almost identical to the original, and it should be because it didn't need to be changed. I just think combat, weapon, and item progression through the game was fantastic. I think they did such a good job, such a good job of keeping the spirit of the original and adding that modern twist. Let's talk about the story. Some people really hate the changes that they made. I don't view them as changes because I, I am looking at this game as a sequel, not a remake. And I think it was a great decision because now anything that they do in this remake trilogy, because I'm looking at it as a sequel and not a remake, I don't feel like it hurts the original at all. If you don't like Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth, whatever, then you can literally ignore it because they are not going back. In my opinion, I don't think they're going back and touching the legacy of the original. I think they're just trying to expand on it. I think they're trying to tell a new story using the original as a platform. They really break the fourth wall a lot throughout the whole game. They wink at the player so much through the whole game. The story feels so meta. There's so many times that Sephiroth will say a line of, you know, one of his lines to Cloud or whatever, and you can tell he's talking to you. He's talking to the player. And Aerith is doing the same thing. There's so many moments in the remake where Aerith, you know, she's speaking to Cloud or Tifa or whoever, but it feels like she's talking directly to you as a player. And, and not just as a player, but she's speaking to you as a fan of the, the original Final Fantasy VII. I love it. There were only a couple of things in this remake that I didn't like. I really feel like the, the scene with the president of Shinra, his death scene, I see what they were going for with that. And I, I loved that they threw in Sephiroth stabbing Barrett. I love that they threw that in. I didn't see that coming. Huge surprise for a scene that really wasn't doing it for me. It pulled me right back in. Because the scene with, with the Shinra president, you know, he's for some reason hanging by, you know, he's hanging off the rail about to fall. And then Barrett has this speech and then pulls him up. And then like he's powerless and, you know, he's at, on the verge of death. And then like that, they switch it around and he's got a gun on Barrett. It was one of the only things that I really felt like was poorly written. Then, you know, the, you know, Sephiroth kills the president and then he stabs Barrett, Barrett, <laughs> Barrett. He stabs Barrett and that pulled me right back in. I was like, okay, I'm with it now. Yeah, you've got my attention. And I feel like they fucked that up too because you have the Spectre starts starts to do the healing on Barrett before you go into the boss fight. So I was never worried. I knew Barrett was going to be fine. So I felt like they fucked that up. I really feel like they should not have shown that because, you know, we've been playing games now for a long time, guys. So it's like as soon as I saw the the whisper or the specter touch Barrett and you see kind of like that live stream almost like healing animation like glow we we knew what was happening nothing's perfect even the original Final Fantasy wasn't perfect there were a few things in this game that I feel like they did not nail but everything that was important everything that they needed to nail I really feel like they nailed when I think about criticisms of the game like I said there were one or two scenes that I feel like were inferior to the original or that they foreshadowed too much. It's hard to think of specific examples because, you know, I'm streaming it. I think we beat it in 10 streams. I'm doing a lot of chatting. So I'm sorry if I can't think of specific examples, but there were only a couple of things that I felt like they did not nail. I had some criticisms uh, in the first half of the game of Aerith's voice actress. My criticism was I felt like the voice actress played it a little too childlike like her voice was a little too childlike a little too naive and innocent like it, it just a, it was just laid on a little too thick and i still feel like that's a fair criticism but as i played through the game and i came to this understanding that i have now i understand why they went with that decision and I, i'm fine with it not only am i fine with it i, I think that there's like a narrative reason for it uh, because i feel like Aerith is supposed to represent an angel in the game. You know, like Sephiroth is the one-winged angel, the black angel, the evil angel. 
I think Aerith is literally supposed to represent the, uh, you know, the good angel, the heavenly angel, the sacrificial maiden or the sacrificial angel. I think that's what Aerith is supposed to represent in the story. So I think that's why the voice actress chose to play her that way, play her as pure and angelic. And now that I have that perspective on the narrative of the story, I like the voice actress's decision with how she plays Aerith. I'm okay with it and I don't have criticisms of it anymore because it makes sense. She's pure like a child, exactly. I feel like she's meant to be por portrayed that way and the voice actress leaned into that and I respect it. As far as the ending of the game, showing Zack and you, you see the ending of Crisis Core and Zack's last, last stand, like there's so many moments in this game that, that like really pulled at my heartstrings. And I do wanna say this because I've seen some back and forth on this about what order you should play the games in. I decided to play the games in the order of the OG, Crisis Core, and then the remake. And after having done that, I would recommend it that way. Because that ending and seeing Zack's last stand again, and then seeing them change it and he survives, bro, it almost brought me to tears. It almost brought me to tears. And it 100% would not have had that effect on me if I had not already played Crisis Core. But yeah, the, the ending was, again, another gamble, another risk, another, like, <laughs> I would be terrified, terrified of making the decisions that this, that this writing team is making. So far, in my opinion, they've done a fantastic job. If I gave Remake a grade, it would be like a 9.5 out of 10. The OG is a 10 out of 10. Crisis Core is a 6 out of 10. Remake is a 9.5 out of 10. And because they've done so well, I'm choosing to trust them. I'm excited about Rebirth. I have faith in the team. I have faith in the story that they're telling. I think that so far they've done it so well. The biggest conversation around Rebirth right now is are they gonna kill Aerith again? I don't know. I don't know if they are. And that's one of the things that excites me the most about Rebirth. I feel like they've given the fan base so much hope that she could be saved so much hope that she doesn't have to die. I think that if they kill her again, it will hurt just as much as it hurt in the original. And I don't think you could do that with a one-to-one -one remake. You couldn't surprise us. Like a big part of the reason why Aerith's death hit so hard in the original and hurt so much in the original is because the, the fans didn't see it coming. It came out of fucking nowhere. Nobody expected it, nobody saw it coming. And it was just like the surprise and the shock of it. It was brutal. And I feel like the only way that you could do that again in the remake is if you give people hope that maybe she won't die. Maybe you can save her. Maybe things could be different this time. And then you fucking kill her anyway. The f I, I'll, I'll cry my eyes out on stream. I'm not gonna lie. I, cr I will cry my fucking eyes out on stream if they do it again because they've given me hope. Because they've given me so much hope that maybe she could live. Now, will it ruin the story if she lives? No, because they're telling a new story. They made it extremely clear at the end of Remake that we're going into a new story. We have altered the timeline. We've altered destiny. We've changed fate. And there's going to be some good things that come out of that, but there's going to be repercussions. Will somebody else die? Will we save Aerith at the cost of losing to Genova or Sephiroth? There's so many different directions that they could go in now. And that excites me as a player because now I, I'm lost. I don't know what story you're telling anymore and I don't know where you're going to go. And I'm excited because I feel like the story that they're about to tell, I'm going to get to experience it for the first time. And I didn't go into the remake thinking that. I'm looking forward to it. I'm open-minded. I'm excited. You know, I, I'm sorry that I don't have more criticisms for this review, but it's just like the original. Like when you play when you play a game that you feel like is truly great, of course there's things that aren't perfect and of course there's things that you feel like they did wrong or things they could have done better, but the game as a whole is so fucking good. I feel like I feel like an asshole sitting here nitpicking at little things that I didn't like. I really just feel like an asshole. This game was so good and they gave me such a good experience. They gave me such a great experience with this game that I'm just thankful. That's really how I feel. I'm just thankful that they gave me this experience and I don't feel like shitting on it at all, to be honest. And if that, you know, if that makes me biased, well, hell yeah, I'm biased. I loved it. Of course I'm biased, but you know, that's my honest thoughts.